Well, it's that time of the week. It is time for our weekly Wednesday update. It is an update for July 22nd. All the professional sports leagues are making plans to start their seasons. Major League Baseball begins tomorrow. Major League Soccer began just a short time ago. Uh, basketball will begin at the end of the month. Even car racing has begun. All of these teams preparing for competition. Doing everything they need to do to be prepared for that competition. With the restrictions that are in place due to the pandemic, things will look different. Many events will take place without fans in attendance. If fans are allowed social distancing and the wearing of masks, hand sanitizing stations will be in place. It, it truly is going to look different. But in spite of the guidelines and restrictions, teams within every sport are working hard. Each team member is doing their part to make things safe. Each team member is doing what they need to do to bring about success for their respective team. You know, as a kid growing up, I, I loved playing baseball. I loved playing uh, that game and being a part of a team. The competition was great. But as great as it was to be a part of the competition, being on a team with, with the other boys who shared that same love for the sport was even better. It wasn't one, it was eight other boys on the field with me. We were a team. We were competing as a team, not as nine individual players. Well, <laughs> those years are long gone, but my experiences on other teams have not stopped. I've been a part of many teams over the years. The playing field, of course, has changed, no longer on a ball diamond. It's the team that I served with for 40 years, planning and leading Super Summer. Or it's that team that I served with on various mission fields every summer for over 20 years. My point is, for, for me, I believe in teams. I, I believe being a part of a team, it is rewarding. It has great benefits. It can be life-changing. There, there are so many lessons that one can learn from being on a team. I would encourage you even right now just to take a moment and, and think of the teams that you've been a part of. What role has being a part of a team played in your life? I believe that teams play an important role in everyday life. They are a part of the fabric of our society. The team allows us to expand our reach, to accomplish even more, to have an even greater impact. Two days ago, the anniversary of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon took place. You know, Armstrong wasn't able to experience that amazing feat just simply on his own ability. It was a large team of people back at NASA. It was the astronauts that he flew with. He, along with the team, made all of that possible. It wasn't long ago, just back in February, when the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs quarterback, was awarded the MVP for the game, the most valuable player. And he received that award, but Mahomes didn't win the game on his own. No, it was him along with players on offense and defense and special teams. It was the coaches, the people in the front offices, the owners. It, it was the entire team that made it all possible. I've been a part of some amazing teams. The greatest team I've ever been a part of is the team I'm connected to now and have been connected to for, for 35 years. And that team is the team that makes up First Southern Baptist Church. It's not one person makes it so amazing. It's the people. It's the church members. It's current staff members. It's church members who are no longer with us. It's former staff members. It's former pastors. This amazing team has played a valuable role in my life so many have invested in my life and in the lives of, of others. And these team members have sacrificed. They've worked hard. They've given up their time. They've served each other, and they've served this community. I've heard the stories. I've observed firsthand the countless ways that this team has worked together to make a difference, to make the name of Jesus great. I've seen team members set their desires aside for what was best for the, the overall team. What amazing team we have at First Southern. I am so grateful that God led Becky and I, along with our daughter Katie, to join this team. Our team has experienced a lot of success over the years. We've had our share of ups and downs. I can't speak for any of you, but I praise God for the amazing team called First Southern Baptist Church. And as you think about the idea of being on a team, I am reminded of Jesus and the team that he put together, a team that 
would eventually grow even larger. And I want to read a passage found in the Gospel of Mark. It begins at verse 13. Afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain and called out the ones he wanted to go with him. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve of them and called them his apostles. They were to accompany him. And he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. These are the twelve he chose. Simon, James and John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas Iscariot. See, that's the team that Jesus put together. This small group who came together to follow him. Jesus, though he could have, if he wanted, he didn't fly solo. He chose a team. He died on a cross alone, but he lived and served in community. Jesus showed his team members the value of togetherness. He showed them the need that everyone has of being connected with others. Flying solely wasn't his approach, and nor was it the approach that he called his team members to experience. Jesus never said, follow me alone. No, Jesus helped his team to see their need for each other. And this is true for us today. We need each other. If you try to fly solo, it may go well for, for a time, but ultimately you're, you're setting yourself up to fail. You need the team. I need the team. I, I can't imagine what it would be like to try to live my life without my team. I need you. We need each other. We do life together. We pray for each other. We study God's word, worship together. We laugh together. We cry together. We serve together. We follow Jesus together. It's exactly how Jesus set things up to, to carry on together as a team. Jesus picked a team, a mixed group from all walks of life, and look what happened. God's doing the same thing here at First Southern. He's putting together a team of people from all walks of life, young and old, rich and poor, with various gifts and talents. He's put together an amazing team, and he's doing something amazing through this team. And I am so glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to be a part of the team with you, with each of you. Just something to consider as you live out this week. A few updates for for July 22nd. Just a reminder of Roaming Through Romans, Sunday, August 9th, and it begins at 5.15 p.m. Sign up is taking place right now. If you haven't reserved your time for you and your family to go and be involved in, in this experience, you need to go to the church website where you'll find the link to the sign up. Don't delay. It's going to be an exciting one-hour experience for every participant, every child, every adult, every teen, as they journey through Rome and learn about God's amazing love. But you must sign up to attend. This will help us to provide a safe environment for every participant. Roaming through Romans will take place on our church parking lot. So sign up now. Don't delay. If you have questions, just contact the church office. Second thing I need to share with you, uh, a change in an adult Bible study class uh, that has a, a time change. Uh, let me just tell you about the two adult Bible study classes that take place each and every Sunday. Bob Parsons' class is now meeting on Sundays at 8.45 a.m. So that is the time change. So it's 8.45 a.m. for Bob Parsons' class. Scott Roberts' class continues to meet at 10 a.m. Now, if you aren't attending a Bible study class, consider attending one of these classes. These men are doing a great job. It's just a, a great time of sharing God's Word online. And there are a number of people that are involved in each of these classes. So if you haven't been a part of it, e either of the classes, check one out this Sunday. We're working to expand the number of online classes that, we're, that, that we have available, and that will begin in September, and I'll keep you posted as that draws near. The Schoenbergs last Sunday with us will be August 30th, and some have asked, well, what are we doing once Alden leaves? Who's going to lead the music in each of the services? Well, I want you to know that I, along with Andy's assistance and with the personnel committee's permission, am working to secure someone to serve as our interim worship leader. My hope is to have this matter resolved before Alden leaves, and so please pray for us as we seek to find the one 
to fill this position and continue to pray for the Schunnebergs as they continue to prepare for their upcoming move and the transition that's taking place. August 19th at 6 p.m. here at the church, we will have our church-wide business meeting. We have a number of matters to discuss uh, in that meeting. We'll discuss and vote on the proposed budget for 2021. We also will discuss and vote on the nominating report for 2021. We will also be discussing and trying to form a, a pastor of worship search committee. So uh, those are three major things that we'll be discussing in that meeting. The meeting will take place in the sanctuary. Again, uh, socially distancing will take place. And again, please wear your mask. You know, as a church, we believe God's word stresses the responsibility of uh, of discipleship taking place within the home. And this is one reason we have our Faith at Home Center. One of the goals with our Faith at Home Center is to provide resources that will assist parents as they take the lead in discipling their children. In the coming weeks, we will share a new video resource that will be available for our families, a resource that brings families together where growing and sharing are encouraged this new video resource is something that our staff is developing. I, I've heard the preliminary plans, and I am excited about what I've heard, what they're, what they're developing. The kickoff for this new resource will take place in early August, and so stay tuned, be listening for the announcements, and we'll keep you posted as it draws near. Um, and be in prayer for, for the staff members that are working on this. I can't wait to worship with you Sunday, but until then, that's all the updates for this week, and I hope you are having a great week, and I look forward again to worshiping with you this Sunday morning.